up until recently, I was going full pescatarian. In the last few weeks and months, I've paid by introducing a little bit more meat into my diet again. But, you know, in terms of heavy training, it just seems to be what agrees the best with me. And, um, yeah, very classic, very boring. But I think the night before a race, I would just have grilled veggies, pasta, olive oil, and a uh, good helping of, uh, of chili and parmesan cheese. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned coffee. Uh, obviously, Australian here, so I, we, we share a lot for coffee. How many a day? How many a day do you do? Three a day. Three a day. That's my that's my quota. That's where I go. I, uh, I I tend to go black coffee only, even though the current weather outside. Uh, we were talking about it earlier, but we've had a massive snow dumping here in Andorra. Um, invites for a milky coffee. Um, yeah, and. Uh, Thanks to Oatly, uh, 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 a milk, even even a, a, a vegan coffee or vegetarian coffee can taste, can taste good when it's milky these days. Alrighty, guys, a very warm welcome to another video. So that was Jan Fredino again. Another clip from uh, his interview with the Super Sapiens team, talking about how he has, I guess diverged from his vegetarian diet which a lot of people uh, know him very well for you know he's been quite open about the fact that he stopped eating meat uh, went vegetarian not full uh, vegan or 100% plant-based depending on your definition of what vegan con constitutes but nonetheless uh, he was very much vegetarian um, so that's basically no meat um, but still eat, including things like dairy uh, eggs stuff like that However, you know, he's kind of said that uh, particularly of late, he's gone a little bit away from that and is including more meat in his diet. And now this is a highly debated topic with respect to nutrition, with respect to performance, uh, endurance, and what kind of, what's the best diet to, to, you know, adopt, I guess. And here's the thing, there are arguments for and against vegan diet vegetarian diet standard pretty pretty basic omnivore diet and i believe that most of them i be, i believe that it kind of not it doesn't matter but it can be done either way and does one necessarily give you massive performance enhancing benefits in my opinion no you know if you go more vegetarian there are benefits to that in the fact that you're eating more plant-based foods you're eating less meat, um, which is by nature a little bit more acidic. Uh, so recovery aspect, yeah, there is arguments either way. However, I think these five things that we've got on our left here are the primary things that you should be thinking about with any diet, whether it's vegan, vegetarian or not. And particularly with endurance, particularly with Ironman and nutrition, you want to really focus on as a key pillar for avoiding overtraining, inducing unnecessary stress in the body when we think about how much stress we put on our bodies through training and heavy workloads of training hours and hours of week on our per week adequate number one adequate micronutrient intake especially carbohydrates is fundamental now you know there are particular athletes out there not professional athletes but there are particular you know, gurus in this field who promote a ketogenic diet. And I'm not saying you can't do ketogenic diet and do okay in Ironman or in endurance. Particular, well, and, and it's, it's a nuanced topic, right? So obviously if, you're, if you've never done ketogenic diet or ketogenic dieting, and then you transition to that, there's gonna be a phase where you're gonna feel like absolute crap and potentially after a month or a few months, you're going to maybe adapt and the body will just get used to it. The body's very resilient and it will utilize what you're giving it. However, realize that, and I'd say pretty confidently, zero professional athletes who are performing at the very highest level are low carb. So model what the professionals are doing in terms of nutrition if you want to be at your highest level possible. So why carbohydrates are super important while well, they reduce cortisol which is raised during training and cortisol is a stress hormone which has negative consequences on the body in the long run in the short term there's benefits to higher cortisol in terms of reducing inflammation um and and some recovery aspect however 
cortisol chronically elevated will detriment your performance and carbohydrates are the number one thing which is going to allow cortisol to be reduced and in order to I guess offset some of the stress of training and adapt to the stress of training allow you to get uh, back into high performance activity faster so ensure adequate micronutrient intake from a calorie perspective and a carbohydrate perspective when we're training we're burning through a lot of carbohydrates make that your priority and then make as well a priority overall macronutrient calorie intake as an absolute priority you'd rather probably eat and christian blumenfeld is an example of this he's come out and said i'd rather eat a little bit more than i need to and get full recovery benefits from my training and not have to worry about getting into chronic deficits etc which is going to negatively impact performance than otherwise so overall macronutrient intake is essential particularly carbohydrates never skip out on it it's very very important for eye man nutrition and i'll just say this people will always try and reinvent the wheel but human physiology hasn't changed and model what the professional athletes are doing none of them are low carb so if you have reasons to do it that's fine have those reasons but don't do it for performance because it's only going to lead to burnout in the long run and that's my opinion there number two test which food sources work best for you so this is important as well you really want to kind of i guess minimize the effect of your food intake on your overall digestive burden so if you're eating something which you know makes you feel very fatigued after which you know makes you feel lethargic the next day well maybe look for something else you know if you're eating a whole lot of pasta and you you don't feel that great doing that but then you switch over and you eat a whole lot of rice and that actually makes you feel a lot better well then stick to the rice you know figure out what works for you different people will respond differently to different foods so as well too much fiber can cause bloating and discomfort Certain foods are better tolerated than others, and you really want to minimize that gastrointestinal distress. So particularly now, and this is more so a an issue that if you do go vegan or vegetarian, and you're now eating a whole lot of lentils for protein and beans and vegetables and whole-based foods, don't be afraid of some processed foods because at the end of the day, if you have so much fiber that you're sitting in bed at night, and you're bloated and it's affecting your sleep it's affecting your recovery and your digestion it's not going to be good for performance so if you focus on performance don't eat uh things which you know are going to cause you bloating and discomfort it's only going to negate the effects of your recovery etc number three ensure my um, micronutrient intake is adequate so i put this second to macronutrient because i think overall calorie sufficiency is the most important thing micronutrient deficiencies will occur in the long run if they're chronically under in under eaten so uh certain things like b12 zinc magnesium iron particularly if you're following a vegan or vegetarian diet b12 but even if you're not b12 deficiency can still prevail so ensure you are getting enough b12 in your diet um if you are vegetarian or vegan then supplement with that you can do b12 injections they're not banned it's just a vitamin it's not a big deal and it's very important for red blood cell production hemoglobin which is very important for endurance and performance zinc and magnesium you know these things can be supplemented before bed and improve recovery you don't want to overdo the zinc um, magnesium can cause some gastrointestinal distress zinc as well you want to make sure you're taking that in with food if you're supplementing it um because it can cause some nausea but these things generally can help to facilitate testosterone production um healthy hormone production in both men and women so don't skip out on these two iron as well obviously you never want to be overeating iron but if you're training a lot you're going to be burning through it as well so remember that micronutrients are very important there's many more than this that you need to be uh concerned about but don't skip out on them and then particularly if you're pertaining or we're talking to a vegan diet then B12 is probably a number one that you want to just make sure you supplement a little bit more with. Not a big deal at all. It's not like a big drama. And uh, and then generally your vitamins and minerals overall. Number four, don't forget about electrolytes. So this is a when people go into this for like health reasons, they might be under the assumption, oh, well, you know, too much salt's unhealthy or whatever. If you're training a lot, sweating a lot, don't be scared of salt. 
It doesn't increase your blood pressure that much in the long run if it's consistent. So what's going to happen is if you're a very following a very low salt diet, then your levels of what's called aldosterone, which is involved in blood pressure regulation and sodium retention, they will increase in order to extract more sodium from when the blood's getting filtered through the kidneys, extract more back into the blood. So if you're very low sodium intake, you'll have higher aldosterone levels, which will help to increase your blood sodium levels. If you have very high sodium levels consistently, your aldosterone will be quite low consistently because it's like, especially if you don't need as much as you're taking in, just to flush out that extra sodium. So the body has a very well well, you know, well-balanced system that regulates sodium in the body. So, so long as you're being quite consistent with it and you're not going low salt and then one meal out of a month, you're going massive or whatever, you are going to be regulating sodium very, very easily through aldosterone levels. It's not a big deal. And you'd rather have adequate levels of sodium than too little, in my opinion, particularly when you're doing endurance and a lot of training and you're sweating a lot. So don't be scared of electrolytes and salt intake. Number five, and this is probably just as important, test blood at least twice per year if you're serious about performance. So why is this important? Well, whatever you're doing with your training will affect your blood values. Your sleep will affect your blood values, but your nutrition in particular will also affect it. In, and particularly in terms of micronutrients, B12, zinc, magnesium, iron, all that kind of stuff. Also hormones. So if you're following a ketogenic diet, and you know it's you feel like it's working but then over time you have a reduction in performance the only way you're going to know what's really going on is if you test your blood you want to make sure your testosterone levels aren't dropping too much you want to make sure your thyroid's in check your tsh is on the lower end it's healthy and functioning well you want to make sure your um cortisol particularly am cortisol isn't creeping up over time as well as your iron your ferritin stores your hematocrit, your hemoglobin, all that kind of stuff. So the only way you can objectively do that is testing blood. And I'd say if you're serious about performance and if you're serious about understanding what your diet practices are actually doing to you on a physiological level, then test your blood at least twice per year. Potentially, if you've got a big race coming up, test it before you do the training block, test, test it you know, halfway through the training block just to monitor how things are going and ensuring you're not going and dipping into the trap of overtraining, under eating, which is going to drop your testosterone, it's going to raise your cortisol and can lead to micronutrient deficiencies as well. So blood tests, very important and the only real objective way of measuring this stuff. So there's five pillars that I believe are really important to follow. And it doesn't really matter if you're doing a vegan, vegetarian, omnivore. I wouldn't advocate for a carnivore diet because that's just going to be pure ketogenic, very acidic and not going to be conducive to strong endurance performance but regardless of the diet you're doing if you're following these five things ensuring micronutrients not eating too little calories test what food works best for you and what you can digest most easily not doing too much fiber or uh, focusing on whole foods if it's going to cause distress that is uh, ensuring you're getting micronutrients don't skip out on sodium and electrolytes and test your blood to really know what's going on and if you do all those three all those five things it's very difficult to get into trouble because you're going to be able to objectively monitor what's going on in the long run regardless of the diet you're doing regardless of the reasons for that diet so that's iron man nutrition from my perspective let me know what you guys think hopefully that was inf uh, useful information for everyone and leave a comment below with uh, your opinions on the topic. I know when we talk about nutrition, it can get very, uh, you know, not controversial, but it can get heated in the sense that people uh, go one way or the other. But I would say, regardless, do these five things and you're really going to try, you're really probably going to not get into the trap of having your diet be detrimental to your performance. So take care, guys. And I will see everyone in the next video.